Hello, my friends. I hope you're doing great on this beautiful day. It is such a beautiful day today. We walked with our little dog and we saw all these beautiful flowers. There's so much color everywhere. And speaking of color, we are about to explore a very exciting Southwest um, palette. So please join me. And uh, this is my new necklace design, which I called uh, Song of the Desert. And we are going to make this into not one, but two different colors. So this one I called Pueblo, and the new one is going to be Yuka or Yaka, whichever way you decide to say it. And um, so I'm very excited about this one because of course it has some of my favorite stones in it. And I will show you. Uh, so of course we have the very, very beautiful and very iconic Sleeping Beauty turquoise. And um, I, I, I just, you know, I just have to tell you um, well, actually, I, I think I'll start with the pendants themselves, which I think are very exciting. Ellen says, stunning designs. I just ordered both designs. Flawless inspired. Oh, thank you so much, Ellen. I hope you enjoy them. And she says, hi, Irina and everyone. And hi, Ellen. <laughs> I hope you're having a beautiful day as well. Jolene says, hello. Hello, Jolene. Fonda says, good evening, everyone. Happy Friday Eve. Hello, Fonda, and happy Friday Eve to you. Angela says, good evening. Hi, Angela. Katie S. says, gorgeous day. Hi, all. Oh, isn't it, Katie? And of course, we are all in the same area. And oh my goodness, it's been such a beautiful day. It's like a perfect day. Linda S. says, hello. Hi, Linda. Debbie says, hey, everyone. Hi, Debbie. Betty says, hello, you guys. And hello, Betty. Okay, ladies, I'm so glad you joined me today for this one. So just a couple of words about the pendants. These are so beautiful in person. I hope they're beautiful on camera. They are inlay, otherwise known as intarsia. So um, what we have in these pendants is... Um, gemstone and shell and something that they call resin uh, but the technique itself is so um, it, it really takes so much skill to do something like this because literally every little dot every little line each of these beautiful little houses is inlaid entirely by hand. And so here we see a little bit of shell and no, this is not spiny oyster. This is more of a clam shell. And we have a little bit of uh, mother of pearl in, in the yucca one. Um, and these are just really amazing. And I wanted to do them justice. So I ended up going with the most iconic turquoise in the world. Um, and yes, Sleeping Beauty is the most high-end turquoise, but I had to go with it. I just wasn't going to skimp on this because look how perfect it looks with the pendant. And the same with the spiny oyster. So we're using a little bit of spiny oyster in both pieces actually. And of course, turquoise and spiny have become such uh, an iconic variation or not a variation, but juxtaposition at this point. They're so iconic. They have become traditional because as a society, we're getting away from using coral uh, because of course we want to save our coral, coral reefs. And hence, I am also definitely following this trend of switching 
to Spiny Oyster, which has become extremely well known in the jewelry world as this amazingly beautiful gem, natural colors in reds and oranges and purples. So that's what we're doing today. And we also have a little cubic zirconia, just as kind of a little divider for the two colors. I, I felt that it, it does something really nice for the design. It picks up the black color in both of the pieces. So um, that's going to be similar in, um, in both necklaces. So should we get started? Amy says, hello, everyone. Hi, Amy, and thanks for joining us. Sabrina says, hello, Irina, Tony, and all. Nice outside. Hi, Sabrina. Yes, it is so beautiful. What a great day today. Okay, guys, I know it's like I, I love it, you know, when the weather is like this, but just wait till October, no, November. I'm sure I'll be whining about the cold. Um, and thank you for putting up with the whining when it happens. So, um, so let's get started. Kathy says hi. Hi, Kathy, and thanks for joining us. All right, ladies, so I'm going to get started. And this is going to be a nice necklace to review our wrapped loops. And uh, lately I'm making a lot of organically wrapped loops. So that is going to be how we make this necklace. So <clears throat> I'm going to get started approximately one and a half inches from the end of my wire. And I am using 24 gauge wire today. I'm going to move these just a tiny little bit. How about that? So I am um, starting by making a wrapped loop and because I want all of my loops to be consistently shaped and sized, I'm using a bale making pliers and this is the smallest of all the bale making pliers. And I'm using the small side of it. As you know, there are two cylinders of equal size. So we are using the smallest. And I'm just going to start making my loop. And um, let's make sure that it's nice and centered. It's not quite centered. So we'll just move it a little bit. And now it is centered. And we're going to slide this right onto the loop. So there's this little built-in loop right at the top of our pendant. We're connecting to that loop right away. And uh, we're going to make two coils. Joan says, hello, they're both beautiful. Thank you so much, Joan. And hello to you. Okay, um, so I made my two little coils. I'm going to slide my spiny oyster bead onto the wire. And now I'm going to do the same on the other side. So just leaving a little bit of space, maybe about a millimeter between the bead and the 90 degree angle right here. I um, am now going to make the second loop. And with making these organic loops, we are still leaving exactly the same amount of space between the bead. You see how there's just a little bit of space between the bead and, um, and the, uh, the loop. I'm not going to wrap that loop just yet. We're just going to leave it hang. Well, actually, no, we're not going to leave it hang. Uh, this is not a big surprise that I pre-made some of our loops because I'm sure that most of you ladies watching are quite expert at making wrap loops. So I pre-made a little bit. So we're just going to connect right into our next loop. Or I could have made this loop and then I would have connected to the next loop, either way. And, or via the next loop, I should have said. And so now we are going to use our long end of the wire and make 
a couple of coils right into that little space. So ideally, you have just two little um, coils on one end and uh, another two little coils on the opposite end. And now that we have connected and we have started to wrap, now we're going to make this organic loops. And so all I'm going to do is just start wrapping over my coils. And so you see how I'm just wrapping right over. And you may end up with two coils, you may end up with three coils. And whatever is a little bit extra, just cut off the excess wire and tuck in your wire end just like that so it doesn't poke the wearer. So we're always going to tuck in our ends really nicely. And now we're just going to turn it around and since I'm a righty, I'm going to hold on to my loop with my chain nose with my right hand. Although, you know, whatever is really comfortable for you. You might be a righty, but maybe you're doing it the opposite way. Just whatever feels right. And we're going to trim the wire on this one as well. And again, tuck in the end. So this is one side of our necklace. And now, we are going to make the other side. So this is going to be just the repetition of the first step. So again, about one and a half inches from the end of the wire, we're going to make a loop. And uh, I believe I mentioned that this is 20 gauge wire. Uh, but I did not mention that it's going to work best if you choose half hard. Well, actually, if you choose to buy the kit, um, the wire is obviously already there for you. Uh, but if you are making loops on your own using 20 gauge wire, um, I think it's always a good idea to go with half hard or the equivalent of half hard. And we're going to slide our little bead on right now. So I'm going to start on the next loop again, leaving that little bit of space. And uh, while we're making our loops, so we, most of us have heard about the beautiful Sleeping Beauty turquoise. But do you know why the mine is called Sleeping Beauty? So I think this is actually pretty fun. Um, so here, I'm just going to show you this before I connect to my pre-made mini chain. So here's my little chain that I made previously, and we are going to connect to it right now via the second loop. Pammy J says, good evening, Irina, Tony, Lauren, and everyone. Hi, Pammy J. So nice to hear from you. Allie says, hi, so cute, very colorful, and ready for summer. Oh, thank you so much, Allie. Yep, that is exactly where I was going with this. This is definitely summer colors, and I love color. And uh, this is definitely very colorful. So speaking of color, well, you know what? Let me finish one, one story and then I'll, I'll talk about color and how all these colors came together. Uh, Barb says, sorry, I'm late joining. Uh, when purchasing wire, will it say half hard on the packaging? Hi, Barb. That is a very, very good question. So if you are purchasing sterling silver or gold filled wire, it will always say whether it, or it should, you know, I guess I shouldn't really promise. It depends on a, on the seller. If you purchase it from us, certainly it will say dead soft or half hard. And most reputable sellers will let you know whether it's dead soft or half hard. However, if you're working with base metal wire, 
it will generally not say whether it's dead soft or half hard because they're not the same standards in base metal wire and there's so many different manufacturers. However, just through trial and error and uh, working with different brands and experimenting, um, I found a couple of brands that I really like and those to me are very similar to dead soft and half hard even though they're not necessarily sold as such so what you will find in our etsy shop are two brands you will find and by the way we're connected yay um so you will find two brands you will find artistic wire which is similar to dead soft and you will also find bead smith smith wire which is similar to half hard so if you're working with something like this uh you're going to want the beadsmith wire ellen is wondering what is the name of the adobe house design oh thank you for asking i called it pueblo and it is already in the etsy shop um of course i think at this point everybody knows that pueblo is is um um the word for like a little village in spanish or village just village and um so that is why i called it that and of course yucca is incredibly obvious and speaking of the designs and the colors and inspiration i do like to talk about inspiration because people ask me about that all the time and uh, so one of the easiest ways to create a color palette is just look at your pendant look at it and pull out the colors in it and it's not that you absolutely must have every color in the pendant in fact sometimes in my opinion that is a mistake that people make uh, but just pull out the colors that really speak to you they don't have to be the predominant colors they don't have to be the the colors that you see most of but uh but it's really the colors that really speak to you and in my case i love these colors i i work with this palette so much and it's very easy for me to look at these uh, pendants and be really inspired. In fact, you know, I'm just going to tell you that it started out as I just wanted to make a piece of jewelry for myself. In fact, that's how a lot of my projects start out. Um, I just think about what would I like to wear this summer or, you know, eventually this fall and so forth. And that's sort of how it comes about. And I was extremely inspired by both of these designs. So here we are. Barb says, thanks so much. Oh, thank you so much, Barb, for asking. And Allie says, lovely pendant. Are those sold separately at the store? Um, good question. Yes, they were. However, we just sold the very last pendant yesterday. Uh, we did have them at the store. They, they went so quickly. I bought them in, in Tucson this year, and we had them in different designs. Uh, I have to tell you, these were two of my favorites, which is why I bought some extra for, for this project. I wasn't quite sure what kind of a project it was going to be, but I felt like it was going to be a project. So here it is. So right now, they're available in the kit. Uh, we don't have any at this point outside of the kit, but I will do my best to get some more in because people love them. They went in just a few short months. Uh, we don't have a one left. Okay, ladies. So, um, so where are we? We have made this little chain. I know you blink and wow, this chain appears, right? And so I made this little chain, and as you can see, I left the links unwrapped, or the top links, I should say. The very last link is unwrapped. And this is so that we can connect to a jump ring. And why would we not just connect with a jump ring, you're thinking, right? But we're actually using jump rings that are soldered so they don't have a way to open 
And so we're just going to string the jump ring right onto the wire and into the loop. And now we're going to wrap the loop. So sometimes I really like uh, using a soldered jump ring because, well, there's no way it's ever going to open. So that's, that's a good thing, right? Oh, and did I ever say why Sleeping Beauty is called Sleeping Beauty? Did I ever finish that thought? Um, Tony is saying no, so I will just tell you why. I just found out very recently. As it turns out, the mountain range uh, where Sleeping Beauty Mine is located actually looks like a sleeping woman from a distance. It looks like a sleeping woman with her arms crossed. Isn't that just a really nice way to name the mine? It's so poetic. I love it. And so I wrapped and now I am snipping off the excess wire and pushing in that little and. And let's do the same thing on the other side. So the reason you have to wait to uh, do the second set of coils when you're making those organic loops is because until you have wrapped the first set of coils on both sides, it's simply impossible. It's physically impossible to do because it's not going to stack up like this. I think you have to try it in order to really understand how it works. And now we are on the other end of the necklace and we will just slide our jump ring in, our soldered jump ring in. And again, we're going to coil. So when you guys get your kit, um, make sure you identify the soldered jump rings right away and use those at this point because you know they're actually the same size. There are two sets of jump rings. There's a set that is soldered and there's a set that isn't. And the one that isn't we're going to use a little later when we connect our findings at the very, very end. And again, I'm going to snip off the end of the wire and tuck it in. And let's finish the other side of this little wrapped loop component. So because of the organic nature or slightly organic nature, of these loops, it just really does not matter if the second set of coils is really snug or not. It's just not going to matter. If it's a little messy, no worries. It just adds character. Okay, ladies, so let me brush this wire off. And this is what we have at this point. We have two soldered jump rings. And the solder jump ring is a good place to attach our leather. So you um, will have quite a bit of leather uh, when, when you open your kit. I believe the necklace can be up to about 32 inches. However, I did not make my sample, nor uh, am I going to make this necklace. 32 inches. I mean, you know, we always allow for more length because of course everybody has different preferences, but the chances are you're going to want to wear it a little shorter, perhaps, and uh, we will be able to cut it to size in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, I'm just cutting my leather in half. And I'm going to attach one side through this little soldered jump ring. So now you can see why it's really preferable 
to have a jump ring that will not open because we're attaching our leather to this. And uh, I'm going to use the same wire, 24 gauge wire. And uh, I'm just going to bend it a little bit, something like that, just by hand. And keep your leather it, so that it's attached in the center. I know it's not quite attached yet, but it's about to become permanent. So very close to our jump ring. You can be a couple of millimeters away or a few millimeters away, whatever your preference is. We're just going to start wrapping something like this. And the chances are, it's going to be very difficult to just do by hand. So we're going to use our chain nose pliers and just give our wrap a little bit of a squishy. So we are, I don't know, is there a different word? I, I think I like squishy. Um, so we're going to squish it um, until it's really holding the leather. And uh, we'll go around uh, the, the two sides of the leather three times. And once you've gone around three times, again, don't forget to give it a little squishy uh, pretty much on every turn or maybe even half turn if you feel you have to. Uh, so we want this nice and snug. And then we are going to give it a little bend like this on both sides. So I'm actually unwrapping it just a tiny bit just so that I can give it a little bit of a bend. And because we're working with one millimeter leather this time, you really don't have a whole lot of room there. So the idea is for the end of the 24 gauge wire to be pointing towards the leather. So now I feel like I'm at a good spot to trim the wire on both sides. And, and now we have just enough of an and on each side where we can take our chain nose pliers and just pinch it right into the leather. So we want that sharp little end to be pointing right into the leather. And we, we can squish it this way too, you know, it's all about the squishy. And so we're going to pinch it, we can shape it if we need to, just make it look nice. And because it's 24 gauge wire, it's really quite pliable. Okay, so mine ended up at a little bit of an angle. I don't think it bothers me a whole lot. I don't know, what do you think? Just a little bit of an angle. I don't think it's bad. And uh, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to put one end of the leather through and um, even out the ends so that our jump ring is right in the center of our leather segment. And again, I like to start by bending the wire a little bit. And now we will wrap. And again, you might just want to keep your chain nose pliers right next to you so that you can pinch it in, give it a little squishy every so often, whenever it needs one. And I think I'm just about there. So it's always a good idea to squish it this way as well so everything is nice and snug and i know when we make wrap loops we don't necessarily do that because it's a bit easier we're wrapping into a specific space here we're not wrapping into that little space right um, so there's plenty of room for our wire to expand those little coils 
So we're, we're going to make sure that we don't allow the coils to expand and just keep them nice and snug. And do the same thing on the other side. And those little ants, sometimes they're not super cooperative, but if you make those bends before you push them down, it works great. I find that it works really, really well. So this is what mine looks like so far. And then, of course, let me show you my finished piece. So I thought that it's kind of fun to add these little extra coils. And so there is a practical side to the extra coils. Um, and the practical side, of course, is that it is holding the two sides of the leather together. Because, of course, if we don't have those, it's going to separate. You know, it wants to separate. So unless we have these, like, almost little crimp guys in there, it's going to want to separate. And, of course, the aesthetic side of it is we kind of like how it looks, right? We, it, I think it's kind of fun. Um, but what I'm saying is that it is purely optional. So if you like the option of making the extra little coils, uh, great, do it. If not, no worries, just skip them. Or maybe if you're making it a longer necklace, maybe you'll want to have a few more of them. Uh, or even if you don't want to make a longer necklace, you can always position them a little more snug and um, and have more of them or less. Uh, it's your necklace. You do you do this however you want to. So in the meantime, I'm just showing you one more, and then I think I'll fill in the rest later. And in the meantime, we'll do one more, and then we'll finish our necklace. So again, they kind of like to spread a little, so just, just smush them in a little bit. And again, we have that little bit of a bend that is, it doesn't look like a big thing, but it is so important so that we don't scratch our neck or whoever you're giving it to, unless maybe you're not very fond of them. I'm joking, by the way, that's a joke. Um, so if, um, if you make those little bends, it will work so nicely because then the end of the wire points right into the leather, maybe into the separation, you know, where, where the two pieces of leather separate a little bit, or maybe just into the side of the leather. It really doesn't matter a whole lot as long as it points towards the leather. Pammy J says the extra coils really add to the beauty of the design. Oh, thank you so much, Pammy J. I really do appreciate it. And Kathy says, Kathy C says, when I, when I first saw, I thought, it, I thought they were silver beads. Looks nice. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I did consider using crimps. I considered using jumbo crimps for this. And, you know, I don't know that it would not have looked nice. Um, but I felt that this is a bit more snug and who knows, maybe next time we'll, you know, we'll experiment. Maybe, maybe jumbo crimps would work. Allie is wondering, are the pendants painted stone? No, Allie, thank you for asking. You probably missed the beginning of the video. They're actually beautifully inlaid stone and shell. It's intarsia. Intarsia is another term for inlay and uh, it is so well done these are such great pendants there I mean it would have been beautiful painted as well but these happen to be inlaid stone Carmen says a little late but loving the necklaces thank you so much Carmen so I think I'm going to skip 
wrapping more of these because um, I want to get to the end and show you what happens at the very end. So this is where we determine the length of our necklace. And I want mine to be a little bit on the shorter side. I have I have my trusty ruler right here. Allie says, oh my goodness, never heard of that. Pretty awesome. Oh, thank you so much, Allie. All right, guys. So I think I'm going to make it 16 inches. However, uh, it's not really limited to 16 inches. Be well, uh, so maybe I'll make it actually just a teeny bit shorter, like 15 and a half inches. Because not only does the clasp add a little bit, but also we have a pretty long, I believe a three inch extender chain on this. So you can definitely wear it longer. And as I mentioned, uh, you do have quite a bit of extra leather. Um, the maximum kit length is 32 inches. So if you want it longer, again, it is your necklace, so you make it however you want to. So I'm just reaching for the glue, and I always have a little piece of paper next to me when I use glue, because you know how that goes. Sometimes just a little more than you intended to comes out. So I am going to open my glue and before, so here, here's a, and I know most of you guys know, if you've been watching me for a while, you know about these wonderful leather crimps. They're really awesome, amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, so the way it works is um, the center of the crimp is collapse, collapsible. So that is the part we are going to crimp. The rest of it is just kind of decorative. And in order to go through the crimp, so th this is going to be pretty snug. So you can see that this is a little bit of a snug fit. And once you have the glue on, and I'm using, um, this is the glue I'm using. It's a super new glue, which I absolutely love for projects like this because this is not a gap filling glue. It literally comes out like water. It doesn't uh, fill gaps. It's very thin glue. Um, and that is why we're able to use it on a project like this. So this is what I'm going to do in order for my leather to go into the crimp very easily. Because, you know, it's one thing to put it in the crimp while we're just playing around and see if it fits. But it's a completely different thing once you have the glue on. This glue dries amazingly fast. So we have to work really fast once the glue is on. So well, let's just see our fit and then we will glue. So beautiful, super easy. So again, I think we have a theme. It's a squishy kind of theme for this project. So I'm just, um, I'm just pinching the two sides of the leather together. And then I am putting the glue on. Not too much though. If you feel you have a little much, just use a piece of paper to whisk some of it away like I'm about to do. That was a little bit much. Uh, like I said, it comes out very, very quickly. And so into the crimp we go. And uh, I like pushing my leather in until it reaches the end of the crimp. So I can literally see the, the tail of my leather right there, just below the loop. And now I'm going to give it another little, or actually a little squish right in the center of my crimp. So just like that with the chain nose pliers. And I like flipping it over and doing it on the other side as well because our chain nose, of course, um, it's not a parallel pliers, so it's like a V. So one side of the V is always just a little bit larger, which is why it's a super good idea to flip it over and do it again. And 
we'll do the same exact thing on the other side just a little squish and have your crimp right there so it's ready to go put a little glue on again i think that's just a little too much so i'm going to whisk some of it away and we'll put the crimp on while it's still nice and wet once it starts drying you're kind of out of luck so you, you want to do this part pretty fast and now we're going to give it a squish so make sure you squish it like you mean it but but not like um you're not really squishing for dear life you know <laughs> don't do it too hard i mean just just like you mean it we mean business when we're doing this um so this is kind of what it's going to look like i mean if you squish it like you're working out or if you're really mad at someone you might actually break it so just until it looks nice and flat and that's it we're done Allie says love those crimps oh yes so secure they are indeed and between the crimp and the leather it's like you can pass this on to your great-grandchildren uh, someday of course and it should survive you know it's it's just not going anywhere it's that secure and we are now going to use our open jump ring did I, did I say the crimp and glue I meant between the crimp and the glue it's it's so incredibly secure so we're going to add our lobster claw which is right there and of course our extender chain which i love extender chains because you know you never know you might want to wear it a little longer or a little shorter and um so as i said i will fill in the little wraps a little bit later but in the meantime i have my jump rings right here and, um, oh yes, so make sure when you get your kit, make sure you identify the open jump rings and the solder jump rings. The solder jump rings are going to be in their own little bag. And I believe that's going to be the only thing in the little bag. So those are soldered. And definitely you want to save the open jump rings for this part. And we're going to connect our lobster claw to the jump ring and the jump ring is connected to the loop on the leather crimp and we're going to use our chain nose and our flat nose to close the jump ring and you want to close it nice and secure it didn't make much of a noise but I felt a little um, tension right I felt a little metal on metal and that tells me that there's absolutely no space between the two sides of the jump ring so you want to feel that metal on metal and sometimes it will make a little click oh just like that so we heard the click and that is a good thing and that is all it's pretty easy to make, right? So you're going to practice your loops and um, connect the leather. Very, very simple and fun. And of course, it's going to be so very fun to wear as well. So again, are both of the colorways, and they're very similar colorways. They both use Sleeping Beauty turquoise and spiny oyster and just a little cubic zirconia bead right there on both necklaces so um pick your favorite and uh in the meantime i hope you join me tomorrow uh so tomorrow i have a facebook live shopping event and guess what this is very very exciting we just got more ethiopian opals uh, some of them you have never seen um, they are they're beautiful they have lots of colors so i i'm very excited to show you those 
and um, I know a while back we talked about garnets so I'm doing all colors of garnets and of course there are going to be so many other surprises I have some super fun surprises for you tomorrow and this is going to be at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on the Eclectica page and for next Thursday I have I have not done earrings in quite a while so this is my little preview for next Thursday and I'm so happy with these earrings I just really adore them they are super lightweight here let me just give you a little sneak peek what do you think this is you know what it is right it is a cowrie shell super fun super lightweight and this is called um, Ocean Bloom Earrings. And I'm doing this next Thursday. And that's going to be June 15th. It's actually my dad's birthday. Uh, so it's a very auspicious day. And it's going to be at 7 p.m. just like today on my jewelry design page. Uh, which is where you're at right this moment. So obviously you know how to find me. So what do you guys think about my fun little shell earrings? These are so summery. I cannot wait to wear these. I'm so excited about them. I've driven everybody crazy in the store about how excited I am about these shells. Fonda says both are so pretty. I, uh, I love them, the oh, necklaces. Thank you so much, Fonda. Yay. And Allie says, wow, cowrie shells. Oh, thank you. So you like cowrie shells? Uh, Amy says, ooh, love the earrings. Thank you so much. Carmen says, beautiful designs. Yay, thank you so much. Katie S. says, love the earrings. Thank you, I'm so glad. Kathy H. says, just found a whole baggie of those shells, not painted though. Yes, that's, that's the thing. You know, I've never seen them like this. They're so colorful. And I have other colorways. Actually, we will have a lot of colorways in these cowrie shell earrings just because I went crazy. When I saw these, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love the colors literally on all of them. They're so fun. Fonda says cute earrings. Thank you so much, Fonda. Allie says the earrings would make, uh, would be great necklace pendants too. They would. They really would. At some point, I might just include something like this. I don't think I have enough to include them in a video at this point. But if we manage to get a few more, I just might do that. So what do you guys think? Would you like to see these in one of the shopping event videos? Or is it more fun to just have them as earrings and done? Just, you know, you, you know how I love your feedback. In fact, um... Any kind of feedback, I really enjoy. Uh, what would you like to see in the next few videos? Um, for example, you gave me some interesting feedback. You as a group, I mean, uh, gave me some great feedback last Friday uh, because it kind of happened very organically that I, I sold one of the samples that I was showing. I didn't really plan on doing that, but uh, when it happened, um, several people, people suggested that I should have a sample sale type video. So I'm actually working on that. I'm doing that not tomorrow, but next Friday we will have a sample sale um, uh, in, in the video. So um, I, I really love your suggestions and your feedback. Please don't stop. Keep them coming. And please let me know in the comments, of course. Uh, Ellen says, yes, that was me. Excellent. Oh, yay. Thank you so much, Ellen. I, see, I do listen to you guys. And um, yeah, and I act on it very quickly whenever I can. Barb says a sample sale would be great. Yay. Well, we're doing it, you guys. Not this Friday, but next Friday. Fonda says yes, yes to the sample video. Yay! Pammy J says what a unique design with the cowrie shells, so creative. Oh, thank you so much, Pammy J. Levita says love, love, love everything. Yay! Thank you, thank you so much. 
All right, guys. Oh, and you know what? I should probably mention this is just for the local ladies and possibly gentlemen, if you're watching. Um, so this weekend, we are having a sidewalk sale here at Eclectica. So if you're in the area or if you're local, come on down Saturday and Sunday. We would love to see you and we'll have lots of fun little treasures at the sidewalk sale. It's always great fun when we do that. And you know what? We're doing it rain or shine. So if it's raining we will just have to have the sidewalk sale in one of the classrooms. But of course, we're really hoping that we can actually have it on the sidewalk and, you know, enjoy the outdoors like we all like to do this time of the year. Amy says, thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. Allie says, woohoo, that's a great sale. Woohoo, yay. So you've been, thank you. Okay, ladies. So I can't wait to show you the treasures tomorrow. Um, and uh, I'm super excited about the video. And of course, Thursday, I'm so excited about these shell earrings. I've, you know, as I said, I have been um, just so excited about these shells, about the designs on them. They're all different. So I have had a lot of fun with these earrings. So thank you so much again. Thank you for all your comments and I will see you tomorrow. In the meantime, have a wonderful and creative evening.